but it might look like I'm having a good time just because there's a fancy pool in the background, but in fact I'm here chatting to... Simon Crumplin. And what do you do, Simon, when you're not uh, swimming around in a pool <laughs> having a good time? The uh, founder of a company called Secrutiny. Right. Now what I liked about you is when we uh, got a presentation from you this morning was um, I was making the joke that most security is actually a waste of time because the cost or the risk, you know, the money we spend to get IT security doesn't reflect the outcome because companies aren't actually being penalised when they get breached or when data is stolen or whatever. And so we have to find ways to make it more cost effective. What do you say to that? So I, I, I absolutely agree to elements of what you've just yeah. said. I think that um, the industry uh, is currently being propagated by threat mania. And if you dig into most organisations we work with, you know, not all threats are relevant to them. Just because your email goes over the internet and, it's un and it goes in clear text and it can be read by anybody, that's actually a risk, but it's not necessarily a threat to the ongoing success of the business, while yeah. everybody else is sending unencrypted emails. Yeah, and what we've learned, so we do a lot of auditing. Mm. Um, we like to get to a set of evidence of risk with a yeah. client, so then we can tie it to risk appetite and engage mm. with the business to invest. And actually what we find is generally the resource shortage mm -hmm. um, in IT operations and, and the lack of understanding of security risk is generating a lot of the exposure that organisations face. So you're hitting one of my favourite topics here, is not enough people in technology. And the, the people who are in technology are often unmotivated, or doing poorly projects. trained. Projects. Everything's a project. Everything's an ITIL project. Yes. It's, everything's a gap analysis. <laughs> we cover the gap and then we stop spending money on it because there's no more need. Or, right? or, or we've done the project there, but actually it's got a life afterwards because yeah. things need to be fed and watered. So this is what I call the vendor love of day zero and day one. Right. We love to sell it to you and we love to deploy it so that we get paid for it. But actually day two is not my problem, that's somebody else's problem. So yes. This, this is this gap in operations. Well, and I think it's, it's bigger than that because I think, you know, if you look at, uh, an, an, let's take an organisation, yeah. let's say they're 10,000 people strong. Yeah. Um, they'll be very lean in operations, right? They'll have a couple of people looking after Active Directory, a couple of people in the network and mm. so on and so yeah. forth, uh, operating a very transformation a business that's transforming yeah they yeah, want to move yeah. to office 365 we want to do this we want to do that mm -hmm. all of these projects are consumed out of BAU yep so the resource doesn't have time to spend finishing or tuning yep. or operating who's got things. time to tune the cost buffers or scan the IDS or, signatures or update or, the latest certificate on the proxy server or, or verify the permissions in Active Directory or make sure that no one's using domain admin inappropriately yeah. or writing stories for executives so that you can actually understand yeah yeah, yeah. So I think that's, you know... Here's biggest... my key performance indicator. Six million high-risk events, all of them we cleared. Yeah. Really? Where, what does that mean? Where's the risk? Where's, where's the... my key risk indicators, yeah, yeah, that's not right. my KPI. So that's my threat, but what's the problem? You know, what was the risk? We've got to a position now with customers mm. where actually we can make them notably more secure mm. by working with IT operations and embedding security in ops. Right. Right, because the ops people are smart. Basic premise then, tell me I'm wrong here, is that security is an operational issue, not a project. It's, a, it's an operational issue and it's a oh, journey. It's an everyday it's never it's ends. A journey. Yep. But I think and it spans all disciplines. Right. Right? This concept of security is an overlay mm. um, across, actually, if we embed it mm. and we audit and we verify and we assure, yep. actually the organisation lifts yep. as opposed to, I bought this widget and it stopped zero days. Well, are zero days relevant yeah. to the fact, to my business, I sell unicorns. <laughs> my data has no value. If it gets stolen, yeah. do I care? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's an interesting thing where everyone wants to have a zero day protection. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, if I had unlimited but funds, it, I'd is, buy everything. I think the challenge here is that so many companies get caught up in the fear, uncertainty and doubt. And it's a great way to sell products. Fear, yeah. you, know, yeah. <gasps> you know, you know, you, you could just, you know, but as I keep saying to people, look, it's fine to lock the front door, check your windows have locks, you know, make sure that, you know, maybe you put a surveillance system out so you can see around your house what's happening. Yeah. But you don't sit, then go and put a five inch armored door on the front door and then have glass that you can throw a brick through <laughs> on, the, on the window next to it, right? So it's kind of like this. Yeah. You know, I think IT security, enterprise IT security, is so much of that. And, and that doesn't change when you go into the cloud, right? Because you still have to have secure development. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and back to your point, security should go with everything. Yep. But it shouldn't be an inhibitor. Yep. It, it should be an enabler and a control mechanism mm. that we can verify works. You know, one of the things that we've been spending a lot of time doing mm. is reflecting risk in business context. Because actually when you give that to an executive team, firstly they understand it, mm. secondly they go, well how do we fix it? 
well, you need to give me some people yep. so I can administer these things properly yep. and I can operate our business in a more secure and risk-free way. Yeah. And, that's, and, and what we found is once the executives start to have this data presented to them, they, yeah. they take responsibility as opposed to it being an IT problem. Well, scary as IT. So that means, now, the interesting thing here is that you're saying your services or your approach is to do it from the top down. Uh, you're not doing it from the bottom up. So I do bottom up with evidence. Mm-hmm. I need evidence because we shouldn't be doing it on fear, uncertainty and doubt. Mm-hmm. I need to be able to sit there and go, here is the evidence and here is the risk that we have identified. Here's your six million... X's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> six million alerts. Let's analyse those and turn them... Oh, what do you mean only 5,000 of those actually were high risk to your specific business? Well, or even 100, because yeah. when you actually analyse, you find it's a lot less than yeah. you think. And, and we're trying to get to a point in time uh, it's a point in time start to yep. say, in these categories, data, user, network, mm. um, software where malware sits, build, here's the risk and here's the composite view. Yep. Actually, when you then tie that to department or how an organization functions, be it region, be it department, you start to be able to focus where you want to de-risk your organization rather yep. than go, let's buy something for everybody. Right. And you start to focus down. And, and I, 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 my favourite thing of all is when you start getting closer to the ops people, they're smart, right? They get networking, they get uh, domains, they get that date. And they, they know every, what they're doing. And you show them a different perspective on a piece of data and they go, didn't know that, never thought about that, that'll never happen again. Yeah. Because by nature, they're trying to do the right thing. They just haven't so had this, that perspective. So this sounds like poor leadership again. So security leadership or leadership from management... Is it incompetence or is it just they don't have time or they just don't see a path forward to be able to work with ops on security, do you uh, think? I, I, or am I that, reaching that, too far? Well, I, you know, that's a dangerous thing for me to comment on. <laughs> I think, um, I think it, the eradication of MIS, yeah. um, you know, and, and that operational, I'm going to make this thing a live forever, yes. you know, has definitely been... And it been... needs constant grooming and updates. Well, and why change. is it a project? I do, that's my biggest well, issue at the well, moment. This comes down to the ITIL Prince 2 view of the yeah. world where... We have uh, to pay someone to tell us what to well, do the, when we knew. Well, the, I think the challenge was we had poor... <laughs> my view is, is we had poor leadership in an era mm. and projects, you know, people were doing things that just weren't relevant. You know, like the old grumpy Unix sysadmin who was doing his thing, wasting time on various things. And, and then, so we started to do projects to keep them focused. So scope of works, execute the little. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And I think we sort of got into the cycle of, well, that control... But I think if you drop that back down... Yeah. Um, Actually, when you, it, it, the, the benefit we've seen, we generally do an audit. It generates a load of hygiene resolution, yep. posture resolution. Let's fix the firewall because it's a bit out of sync. Yep. Let's sort the AV out because it's not operating properly. Yeah. Once we've done one of those cycles, suddenly the IT operation manager yep. goes, this isn't a project. Okay. So when I tell you that security in IT is largely bunk, this is the perspective that I'm coming at it from is you need less firewalls, less IDSs, less malware scanning, and much more focus on... What actually is a risk? Even if data breaches happen or malware gets you, very few companies go out of business because of it. So there's a big gap between threat and actual risk to the business. A lot of businesses all have the same threats, but not all risks apply to them universally. Yeah, I think big. You know, if you look, certain brands can recover, right? Mm. You know, reality is, you know, a small company that lives mm. on its reputation loses data is very different to mm. a global enterprise that has a problem, but people still need to use it. On that note, thanks very much. Really nice. Thank you very Excellent. much. Cheers.